Let me see. let me make sure. Hold on, Zeke, one second. You have my permission to record this all around your face. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> okay, let me make sure. Following the Jerry Miller shows. <laughs> In one second, Boom. and now you should be good. All right, um, the Dr. Beach, <clears throat> excuse me, repeat photography program, which is a community science program. Thank you very much for the clarification. Mm -hmm. um, this, as the title implies, is all about photographs, and hopefully that'll keep your attention. Um, Excuse me, the dust in here. Um, this is a participation presentation. And in that regard, when you see a photograph of the beach coming up, shout it out. <laughs> we want to share amongst each other these areas that some people haven't seen before. Um, I spent hours, literally hours, going through photographs to try to find some that would intrigue you and give you some information that we haven't run across yet. What beach is that? So just lower to feet. Lower to feet. Oh, and wow. These are all dated. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's 96. So that would have been the summer after the first hot day. Um, so Adopted Beach, but I know most of you know about this program, but for the few of you that don't, um, the Adopted Beach program began monitoring with the first high flow which was called the Beach Habitat Building Program. Um, back in 1996, a um, group of guides decided it would be a good idea to track what was happening with this experimental science and make it relative to our existing standard as far as camping, recreation, and that includes things like parking, hiking, et cetera. Um, they originally started with 38 beaches. We're currently Tracking 44. Um, when I inherited this program as the, the uh, overseer in 2004, we had 43. And I added one beach because the park constructed a beach back to 250 miles and decided it would be a good idea to keep that on there. Um, as of the end of last year, we had well over 20,000 inches in our house. Where's this? North Speak Canyon. up. North Canyon. Right. Right. So I don't think, excuse me, I don't think many of you in here have seen this view of North Canyon yet. That's what awaits you when you go down the river. Mm -hmm. Where are we? Nope. Anyway, except for Q. Where? Marcus. 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 Okay, so the, the photos, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that are acquired by the Adopted Beach volunteers, important word there, um, have been used to help make management decisions by, uh, among others, Grand Canyon Monitoring Research Center. And by the way, they have a wonderful website that contains these photos, and it looks like that. That's the opening page for them. Uh, oh, this is where I'm supposed to insert the PSA. This is Peter Richard. <laughs> Back to Marcus. Wow. Sorry, I get emotional about that. Um, also used by Blinken in adaptive management programs, both our, our Twig and our adaptive management group use the data that we collect through these photographs. Um, frequently, Ben Reader, our Twig representative, will email me, <coughs> excuse me, and he says, I've got four days before. I'm giving a presentation and I'd like to include some of your information. And I usually email me back and say, hi, Ben, I got two days until I launch. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> and it usually works out. <laughs> they also have a website and that looks like this. And this one I really, really like because you've got this slider and you can overlap photographs and you can switch 
back and forth. <clears throat> wow. Which I think is a pretty cool, pretty cool deal. Oops, sorry. Where's that? Uh, not last year. Um, the information from Adopted Beach has been featured in a website at, at ASU uh, put together by a professor named Paul Hurt. Um, it's been used in geomorphology studies uh, by the USGS. Most notably, um, they contacted me to get a whole bunch of information relative to the event of the hot soil components. There's also an essay in an anthology called Outdoors in the Southwest that Lynn wrote for us. Thank you very much. Um, this, <clears throat> this winter, I was contacted by a fellow named uh, Mike Dia. 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 Thanks. Um, contact Pete. He'll tell you more about it. Um, anyway, he, he, they've got a, a field binder for the Returning Rapids project up on the upper basin. And he said, would you please contribute a segment for us? And so I put that together. Um, that's, what, that's what last year's looks like. So there'll be some, another publication of information out there in the near future. Mm -hmm. And that includes things like this. Um, this is Grapevine. And this is the, oh, come on. This is the uh, famous emerging rock. <laughs> Great mm. So that's a demonstration, <clears throat> excuse me, of how much sand actually gets blown on. None of that was removed by water. You ate a lot of that. <laughs> uh, where are we? Stone. <laughs> Looks like that now. Where are we? Thank you. Um, another way to access the Dr. Beach information, of course, is to Grand Canyon River Guides. And we've got a wonderful website that looks like this when we get to it. And you can access all the photos and go through them. Um, I believe you can query by date. Um, you might be able to query by the other level, but it's part of the plan. Yep, so Zora asked her. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think this is 2013, and there's last year. These are the study sites mapped out. First one in line is starting up here with Self, and the last one again is down here, 250 miles. Um, I do an annual report of, of a compilation of information that we've gathered to. The last 12 months worth of photos. Um, by the way, when you volunteer to take photos for the Adopted Beach, there's a little five minute survey sheet about what you've just seen at that beach when you took the photograph. And I take that and then I take the photographs on a big computer screen and put together an analysis and come up with a list of what the beaches look like for that past 12 months. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what that looks like. Um, this is just an illustration of what we consider to be a success or an improvement of beaches from a high flow event. Um, this is the first one in 96. And just, just some samples up there plotted out. I'm a, uh, I'm a geographer by training. Um, I've got this genetic defect. I'm an academic. <laughs> So I like to look at things spatially and compare them. And so I put these all out there just to find out whether there was any kind of relationship between um, success rates and, and geomorphology or distance from the ground and things like that. Um, and then I looked at them relative to the flow from the flow graphs. The important thing about this slide is I want you to notice this down slope of the, of the down on that. That will come up again. Isn't this a beautiful bowling alley? Where's this? Yeah. Okay. This is an optical illusion. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is an optical illusion. And the reason for that is the next photograph you see is going to have been taken from right here in front of the folk. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> not a great success rate. No. So I was observing these. Old Tata Hot Cell. Bass, Dora Bass. Crystal. One of the important things about this photograph and some other ones in here, there's water seeping back out the here and it's taking sand with it. And so uh, during COVID times, it didn't have as many photographs to analyze. And I was up late at night and I wanted something else to do besides the sun and dark snow. And got to wonder why. Why do we have these, <clears throat> this cutoff? So I came across this. And I'll, uh, I'll read it to you. The lower down ramp rate used in 2012 result in sandbar topography that was less steep compared to the down ramp rate used in 2008. However, because the adjusted hydrographic lower down ramp rate was tested in only one year, my underline, and because topographic surveys were only available for two sites, uncertain whether this response would be consistent among many sites huh. or repeatable. I thought that was kind of curious. So I did this. Now, this is going to be a little bit difficult to explain, but I'll give you my best. These are the calculated results in percent of improved beaches from a high flow event, according to the information that I have. This is just my opinion. And in the opinion of the people that, are, that fill out the data sheets when they take the photos. So it's improved. The blue oh, is the monthly average fluctuation from the dam to four months post high flow. It's been proven, <clears throat> excuse me, that fluctuating flows are detrimental to our beaches. That's not true. Okay. So the other thing that happens is that most of my photographs start four months after high flow. So I just looked at the four months after the high flow. And this is the monthly average. And you see it gets bigger. These aren't in chronological order, by the way. I put them because I could visually figure this out a little bit better. I put them in that. And then I had a very good friend, who happens to be a mathematician. Um, he speaks the language of statistics. It's not my vocabulary particularly. Um, but the important thing that he came up with is that this number right here says that there is a 64.4% probability that that flow fluctuation will give you the result of success. Okay. Just drawing it out there, just thought it was an interesting thing. Can you explain what that means? Can I explain what that means? It means to me, Bart, are you here? I'm not. <laughs> All right, good. Somebody that speaks the language. What, what that means is that that relationship explains the 64 percent of the change in the data, the variation in the data. It doesn't explain it all. It explains lots of things. Right. Yes. There's a relationship between the fluctuating flows and the success rate. Mm. Zeke, would you just remind us to go back to that slide? Yeah. Tell us what the X and the Y axis. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so this is a percent of success as determined by whether it's going to be capable, whether percent it's- Percent of the beaches that were successful. It's successful, uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, it's based upon parking. Yeah. It's based upon campability. It's based upon you know, this, the general size of the beach. That's my criteria versus their numbers. And then um, this is the fluctuation, of course. Four months. In the four, yeah, in the, in the four months. And after months, it got two of them there. Two one day percent, which is the red box, from blue. That's, that's that, the R. And 64% is me. So 80% is good. Yeah. So that's a pretty good correlation there. I got to see in statistics when I was in master's. I'm happy to survive. So the question, excuse me, that 
I would like to see people address in the future what we've got to do is uh, taking photographs because we don't know what we're going to encounter. We, we don't know. You know what, what's it going to be like with the generally lower floor? We're going to be camping on nice places like this, and it'll be open and it won't flood us. Hmm. By the way, where's this? Twelve four. Or are we going to encounter more things like this where you have to hike up into camp when you're confined to camp? But where's this? Barney. Uh, upper? No, lower. Come on. Um, or are we going to be taken over by <clears throat> vegetation? Uh, the important thing with this photo, in my mind, is you see the date there? You see the date there? Five months. Yeah. It took five months. When I started putting this presentation together, I was looking, <clears throat> excuse me, at the more recent photos, and I got depressed. I didn't want to leave you guys depressed. <laughs> so I thought I put some successes. <laughs> Where's this? So the thing that I love about this is there are two motor trips. Two motor right there. <laughs> That's a lot of sand. So by contributing photographs, you can help support the efforts of Greg and your river guides through the Twig and the Handler's involvement. We give the, all this data to GCMRC. Um, hopefully it, it is a quality that they can use it to help make decisions that are going to help us out. That's the purpose. That's, that's the whole goal. goal. Um, and then maybe we can use vitalize some of the camps in the Grand Canyon. Where's this? Oh, come, come. Well, not a lot, but we're not a lot. Jake is surprised. <laughs> Give him the cookie. Um, so if you volunteer and you take a photo, uh, uh, excuse me, a camera, I'll give you a camera. I'll give you some sheets. And they show where you should stand to pick the photographs because we're trying to repeat these things as close as possible. And what we want is results. Whoops, what then? No, no, it's okay. I'll got it. Okay. Um, but, Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, when you get out of your boat to do this, it attracts attention. Mm -hmm. You've got your customers want to know what's going on. So you get, it's a great educational opportunity for them. You, know, you get to talk about what's going on in the Grand Canyon as far as the beaches go and as far as the environment down there. What are involvement in that? Ah, this is tricky. Bolo? Bolo, now the Bolo. Very good. Um, it's a really good way to get to know the canyon better yourself. If you have to get out, you take photographs. You have to look at things. All right, this one's easy. Just from a different angle. Allies. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so here's a quiz. What's the take home message? <laughs> so please volunteer please take some photographs first. the one beach two beaches a lot of guides will take an, an upper end and a lower end so that if they've got a passenger exchange they get to show off and hang the passengers on both ends of things <laughs> um you can get cameras and data sheets and things from me while you're here if that doesn't happen and you want to adopt the beach or more and at a later date all this will go over the wind so that it's available while i'm on the water um Thanks so much. Wait, wait. Are there any questions for Z? Any questions? Yeah. yeah. Typically, how many times per summer does the beach get photographed? It, it, if it's you have good. a trip, it'll get photographed that one time. Besides, I take all the uh, 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 beginning 
set every GTS trip. So I'm going out on the river in a couple of days and I'll acquire a set of all those. And then however many people, um, the last couple of years, Paul has been very kind and, and had somebody do an end of the season set for me on his October trip and that's helped out a lot. But it really, it really, really, yeah, really close to it. I would say in the last 10 years, probably averaged four, photo, four sets of photos per season. Uh, Bennett, if you could see that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> every, every time you have to have your, your driveway. Uh, that's, that would be a question for, uh, for Paul or, or one of the other folks. That, or, you know. By the way, Ben, it was a pleasure to see you again. I'm looking forward to doing another trip. Anyone else? Thank you for your time. Thank you. But a little bit uh, better answer there, Bennett, is that the USGS and Matt Kuklinski studies all this sediment and they've got uh, all sorts of fancy sonars and stuff. And they'll look at that sediment structure on the bottom of the river. And much to our uh, pleasure, they're going to do another one of these high flow experiments here, what, at the end of this month or May or something? It's in the works. But a lot of that sediment as we know, just goes right down to Lake Mead. Yep, right there in front of the yeah. Wallapai docks yeah. is where it starts to slow down. So. Yeah, I remember being able to uh, get close to Lake Mead all the way up to the point. Yeah. Yeah, so that sand just keeps pushing down and it's kind of an astonishing number of how much sediment goes down that way when they do these high flow experiments. But, since we haven't done one in the several years and we've been advocating it for the last several years, there's more sediment in the system than mm. there's ever been due to these last couple of years. And so this is, could be the last and greatest beach building flow that we see. And so it's gonna be some astonishing photos to check out here this fall. As far as from Zeke's spring trip here, where as we saw that October 22 stuff is just hammered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so check it out. All right, we're going to break for lunch. Everybody's favorite.